Hello everyone, Moriarty here with the Team Bandit Gang, back again for another edition of Lore Blast, a video series where we dive briefly and quickly through some of the lore of the cards in Gwent. We're back after a week's rest as I've successfully cast the Triangle Within a Triangle spell to summon Enzo and put him to task editing videos, and destroying villages. Speaking of summoning powerful beings, this Lore Blast is all about Alza's Double Cross, and I'd like to thank Reddit user MaxKiller13 for the suggestion on this Lore Blast topic. Those of us who have been playing Gwent over the last year know much more about Alza than we previously did, and although I could spend hours recounting the lore we were given about him, Galantha, and the creation of the Witches, I've decided I'd rather focus in on one spell in particular, and its consequences. The Double Cross was a magical spell created by Alza, designed to summon large, terrible beasts at the control of the mage who summoned them, a powerful, dangerous spell that few have been able to replicate, and the consequences of which have invariably been dire. In The Witcher 3, there is a book called The Double Cross of Alza, a censored version of Alza's tome, explaining the nature of some of his spells without giving the reader the means to actually cast them. Still, the book states the following. The following edition provides information on creatures such as the Frightener or the Koshki, but does not contain the secrets of creating these beasts. To ensure safety, I would nevertheless suggest that readers never utter any formulae out loud and speak all vowels while inhaling. The first chronological instance of the spell's use is of course by the spell's creator, Alza. The story of the spell's ill-fated cast is present in his journey story, and the ritual is described as such. Flashes of blinding light, both green and red, illuminated the landscape. Madoc jumped to his feet and cast his gaze out across the fields to the horizon, where the walls of a far-off Marabou city could be seen reaching above the freshly sodden plains. What's he doing? High above, the voluminous clouds tumbled unnaturally across the sky, growing darker as they shifted ominously from the capital. Suddenly lightning flashed and forked over the dismal vista, swiftly followed by the bellowing rumble of thunder. Light rain gave way to a torrential downpour, and the breeze burst into a stormy gale. The grey-black clouds whirled in the distance, circling a hole in the sky that was opening up. Sinuous rifts of pulsating light veined outwards from the expanding breach, casting a spectrum of vibrant colours dancing across the horizon. From deep within the faraway cyclone, an enormous and horrific form snaked downwards from the portal, its giant, elongated body, adorned with rows of hooked limbs on either side, wrapped and writhed in the sky, descending upon the city of Maribor. Alza created the Vi, or V, a great centipede-like creature which proceeded to kill the sorcerer before decimating Maribor. The creature would rampage unstoppable until it engorged on human flesh and retreated to Riverdale's gloomy woodland. The spell was also possibly employed by the rogue, excommunicated archdruid Freginal when he created the Koshki. Freginal was an ardent fan of Alza's work, and pored over his tomes looking for any means to grant himself true power. He believed he found this in the infamous sorcerer's summoning rituals, and spawned forth the Koshki to help him and his marauders terrorise the people of the Amal Mountains. The Koshki was a gigantic crab-spider hybrid, a being of incomprehensible power and hunger. Its bestiary entry is a simple, what, in your opinion, is the best way to describe a Koshki? Death. I'd call it death. And the card's flavour text in Gwent follows a similar line. If I tell you Koshki is death, you'll go to the Krieg anyway, right? In the first Witcher game, the Koshki is shown as a boss battle for the Witcher, which is apt given the creature's presence in the story, A Road With No Return. In the story, a blacksmith named Mikula tried to rally villagers to oppose Freginal, his marauding band of violent bandits, and his Koshki creature. He appealed to the local druids for help in putting down their rogue former member. The druids dispatched Visenna, Geralt's mother, to meet the blacksmith and discuss the problem Freginal presented. The exiled druid learned of this scheme and sent Minissa, a witch in his employ, to intercede the meeting and kill the druid agent. Fortunately for Visenna and Mikula, the warrior Corin, Geralt's probable father, arrived at the crossroads instead ahead of the Druidus, putting a stop to Freginal's assassination plot. Corin and Visenna joined forces, and banded together with the people to put a stop to Freginal's reign of tyranny. The former Druid was stopped, captured, and his forces were slain. He was forced to reveal to Visenna where the Koshki dwelled and rested, so the Druidess could put a stop to its evil once and for all. Visenna cast the Mirror Effect spell, turning concentrated sunlight into a beam of pure energy, which superheated the beast and detonated it in a spectacular way. This is supposition on my part, but I believe the auburn-haired woman in the Koshki art may well be Visenna. Let me know if you think that's right or if you've another idea of who it might be. And that is our whistle-stop tour of some of the creatures summoned by Alza's Double Cross. 
An honourable mention goes out to the Frightener, a great and terrifying mantis-like beast, which may also be a spawn of such a spell. Though I think I'll save that monster for a future Salamandra-themed video. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Lore Blasts, and I want to thank you all again for the kind words and suggestions that you throw into the comments section. I read them all, and I know Enzo does too. Please feel free to post any further suggestions for things you'd like to see us cover. Until next time, I've been Moriarty, and I'll see you soon. And we're doing another giveaway for a subscription to the Band Again YouTube channel, and the winner is... Oh, exciting! Woo! The winner is... It's you! Woohoo! Just, just activate that subscription down below. Congrats!